My name is Roosevelt Mosley, and I currently serve as president-elect of the Casualty Actuarial Society. As we celebrate Black History Month, I want to take the opportunity to talk about what Black history means to me, how Black history and the actuarial profession specifically play a role in me entering the profession and progressing to where I am today, and how historical and current DE&I initiatives being undertaken by the CAS play an important role, not just for the future of those underrepresented currently in the CAS, but for the entire profession. Carter G. Woodson was a scholar who earned advanced degrees from the University of Chicago and Harvard University. Woodson was a member of the American Historical Association, and as part of that association, he came to believe that African-American contributions were overlooked, ignored, and even suppressed by the writers of history textbooks and the teachers who used them. In response, he founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1915 and started the Scholarly Journal of Negro History the next year. Woodson launched the Negro History Week in 1926 during the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. This was expanded to the entire month of February in 1974. Woodson wanted this to be a time of celebrating the achievements of Black people as a race and a recognition that Black people are a part of the history of this country from the very beginning. In the spirit of the original purpose of Black History Month, I would like to take a moment to recognize the achievements of Black people in the CAS and how those achievements have directly impacted my career path. In 1989, I was entering my senior year of high school. I had been accepted to the University of Michigan, but I was still undecided as to what degree I wanted to pursue. I knew I liked math, but the only real professions I knew of where I could use a math degree were teaching and engineering. My mother was a teacher and she encouraged me to consider other options. And I didn't really like science, which was going to make engineering tough. So I pulled the Encyclopedia Americana off the shelf and looked up math. At the end of that entry, one of the occupations listed was actuary. I had never heard of an actuary, so I pulled out the A volume and looked it up. In the entry was the address for the Society of Actuaries. I wrote to the SOA for more information, and one of the things they sent me was a brochure describing the actual profession. In that brochure, there were two people that were key in the Black history of the CAS and in my career. The first was Ali Sherman. I didn't know it at the time, but I would later come to learn that Ali was the first Black fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society. But as a 17 year old, seeing two actuaries that looked like me in that brochure was an important element of the decision to pursue the actuarial profession. For me, not only did I consider the nature of the work, but also whether I would feel like I belonged. Reading the qualifications of an actuary and seeing what actuaries do day to day spoke to the first element of the decision. Seeing Ali spoke to the second. As I later met and got to know Ali, I realized that he was one of the most talented actuaries I knew and had enjoyed a very successful consulting career. Mike Poe was the other actuary in that brochure, and I have also had the opportunity to get to know Mike over the years. And as talented of an actuary and successful a consultant as Mike is, he's even a better man. Although I never had the opportunity to work with Ali or Mike, the encouragement and advice they have freely given and the examples that they have set have been a part of inspiring me to achieve what I have achieved and has been key in inspiring a generation of actuaries, not just black actuaries. In 1999, I had the opportunity to attend the annual meeting of the International Association of Black Actuaries. It was there that I was directly connected to black actuarial history. As a young black actuary that had just received my FCAS, that meeting and the connections I made there are still inspirational to me and my career to this day. There were a number of history-making people at that meeting one was Linda Shepard, who was the first black female to achieve the FCAS designation. Marsha Barrow Morris, the first black woman to achieve the fellowship in the SOA. Sharon Robinson, the fifth African-American to achieve the FCAS designation. And John Robinson, who was recently elected as the first African-American president-elect of the SOA. People often talk about walking on the trails blazed by those that have come before us. One of the blessings of the IABA meetings has been the ability to not just hear about those trailblazers, but to actually get to know these trailblazers, to understand how they blaze the trail, and to learn how we need to keep blazing the trails. 
Because I have been inspired by a generation of actuaries that have come before me, it is my responsibility to encourage those that are coming after me. After achieving my FCAS, one of the first committees I joined was the Joint Committee on Minority Recruiting and Career Encouragement. Many of these efforts of these and subsequent committees was to increase the awareness of the profession amongst our minorities and also to provide resources and assistance to help underrepresented groups succeed in the exam process and in the career. While these efforts have taken different forms over the last 20 years that I've been involved, the focus of these efforts remain the same and continue to be the focus uh, on the, of the revised DEI strategy recently approved by the CAS Board of Directors. The goal is as it has always been, ensuring equality of access to the opportunity provided by the actuarial profession. It does not mean lowering our standards. It means making sure all who can meet our standards have the opportunity to demonstrate it. Personally, I continue to reach out to leaders and experienced professionals that came before me, not just black actuaries, but all actuaries. Learning from those who have been there and done that will help continue to push me to be the best actuary and the best leader I can be. I am also grateful for my contemporaries, actuaries from my generation, who I have had the chance to learn and grow with. And I'm also grateful for the opportunity I have to inspire the next generation of actuaries, whether it is participating in high school and university actuarial events, serving as a mentor for university students and young actuaries, or planning leadership events to inspire the next generation of leaders. I know I did not make it to where I am on my own, so every chance I get, I reach out to try and help someone else. Let me leave you with this. I was inspired and supported as a result of the DEI efforts that were underway in the 1980s. And I am encouraged that members of the CAS from different races and backgrounds still are making the choice to inspire the next generation of actuaries through continued DNI efforts. We have not succeeded yet. As our statistics remind us, we have a lot of work to do. But I know there are a lot of people that love the CAS and demonstrate that love for our profession by making sure all are welcoming and accepted. If we continue down that path, we will succeed.